even before he made the world. God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Our efforts were never considered in the outpouring of his love or the offering of his grace. Today, Pastor John Mark Bartlett further explores God's unrestrained grace and its great significance. Paul is very explicit on this point in Romans 11, 2 to 6. I would even ask you to turn there in your Bibles. It says, it says Paul, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Foreknew. Do you know, you know that the word when it says, for instance, in the King James Bible that Adam knew his wife and she conceived. You know what that knowing means, right? Right? This foreknew really means those whom God foreloved. Those whom he set his love upon before. That's what it really means. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? How he appeals to God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars. And I alone am left. And they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself. Every word is important. I have kept for myself. Who has kept them? I have. I have. It wasn't the system. It wasn't the denomination. I have kept them. Who have you kept them for? <laughs> Myself. 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. Chosen by grace. Not because of what they bring to the table. Chosen because of what I bring to the table. I, God, has nothing to do with them. God's choice of Elijah had nothing to do with Elijah. Elijah wasn't any special person that God saw potential in. Elijah was a rotten sinner like everybody else. It was the grace of God that intervened in his life. Listen, folks, what Paul said in the book of Galatians. Paul says, he has a verse there where he says, but when God who separated me from my mother's womb Reveal his son in me. And then he says what God allowed him to do. Paul, before he was saved, was a serial killer. So here's what God did. God says, I have separated Paul from his mother's womb. Which is a way of saying from before the foundation of the world. I have already separated him. And just to show you that I didn't separate him because there's anything special about him, I'm going to let him live his life before I reach for him. And you will see what he will be up to. I'm going to give you angels an opportunity to, 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 to understand that my choice of Paul has nothing to do with any goodness in him. Look what he's going to do before I call him. But what he's going to do is not what influenced my choice of him. I just decided to set my love upon him. 
See, brethren, unless we understand grace, we will never be able to worship God and serve him the way we ought to. Never. If, if, we, if we never understand what he did for us, we're going to serve him meagerly and beggarly. So there is simply no way out of the equation. Look what Paul says in verse 6. For if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. There is no way out of the equation. If human beings contribute anything, whatever to their salvation, even if it is their own responsiveness of heart or the exercise of some faith inherent in them or somehow manufactured by them, then salvation is no longer by grace. If I have to fast seven days for God to save me, then that is not grace. I'm not saved by grace. God never asked anybody to get better in order to get him. God never asked anybody to fix up themselves before he will be able to save them. He saves them and then he fixes them up. He saves them and makes them better. You don't get better to get God. You get God to get better. His love has been set upon us. We are foreloved. The grace of God has been freely gifted to us. As we begin to truly understand the unreserved, predetermined grace of God, let us be meditative as he continues to reveal himself to us.